So, as I said earlier, to get the student engaged, you yourself must be engaged and you yourself must show your passion in the subject. Now, the third most important ingredient is professionalism. And this, again, as I said, is my strength. You have to master the knowledge. Now, I think um, if you look at the word professionalism, to be a professional, you have to attain a certain level of competency. Even to be, to entitle yourself to a professional engineer, to call yourself IR, something, IR Ahmad, IR Ali, IR Fatima, you have to at least have a minimum of three years of experience. And you have to have competency in the area of uh, design. You have to be competent in the area of, um, you, have to be, you, have ex you have to have enough experience in field work, management work, before you can even apply to become a professional engineer. So the same thing goes with us being a teacher or a lecturer. You need to master your knowledge. Now, even though you have a first class degree, you come in, you don't have that experience, that teaching experience, then it's very, very difficult for you to achieve that level of professionalism. And that can only come with experience. We are human. We need the number of years. And that uh, mastering of knowledge, when you start teaching many subjects, basic courses, uh, advanced courses, option courses, then you will gain the extended knowledge base, which I call the peripheral knowledge. Okay? And that helps a lot in your teaching. And of course, you have to be prepared to be a professional. I never go into a class unprepared. Now let's talk about the uh, uh, peripheral knowledge here. Okay, these are the things that I have gained through my 20 years of working. I have teaching experience, uh, teaching students from a diversity of um, fields. Yeah? I have taught students at the Polytechnic Nkuma. Uh, I, I spent six months in Polytechnic Nkuma, Ipoh. I had a chance to teach the ATMA students. I had a chance to teach the chemical engineering students. I had the chance, oh, that was a challenge. Teaching the electrical engineering students thermodynamics was a big challenge. Now, uh, and I, was, I, I taught a lot of subjects ranging from first year courses, thermodynamics, statics, dynamics, and then I also had an opportunity to teach final year subjects, option subjects, power plant technology, etc., etc., um, ethics. So those, those adds up to my uh, teaching experience. And with that, I have the peripheral knowledge. To, to, to strengthen my teaching. And the other important thing is I also had the industrial experience. Uh, I obtained my IR, my professional engineer, uh, not through research because uh, you, you can, there are many ways of getting your IR. You can either go through your research using your PhD work or you can uh, use your industrial experience. And I got mine through the industrial experience. I spent every term break in the industry when I was teaching. And that's how I got uh, my IR. I think um, at that time, I was an energy auditor. I was a consultant with the Ministry of Energy. And I have audited not less than 50 industries in Malaysia. Now, imagine coming to class and sharing that with my students. I tell them, you know, if any of you are from Pera, and if you pass by the highway, you can see Pera Hangzhou, the cement plants, uh, what else, uh, Tasset cement. You know, I've climbed them all. I've been up there. You know, I've climbed almost all the cement plants in Malaysia. And I also spent about three months doing energy auditing in Sweden. Now, that is the kind of experience I bring to my classroom. And when the students hear me say that, they say, OK, no pray pray. She, is. she means business here. And I've been there. I've been there. When I talk about uh, the power plant, uh, and I talk about the boiler in the power plant, I'm able to describe the boiler with my heart because I've walked through a boiler. 
When I was doing my energy auditing and we found a hot spot somewhere and um, we wanted to know the reason why, uh, of course we suspect it was the insulation that has dropped off, the brick has dropped off. So when they were, uh, the, the boiler wasn't in operation, I actually walked into the boiler. So when I described the boilers to the students, I described it from my own experience. And this is something that is not in the textbook. Okay. Um, practice what you teach and uh, teach what you practice. That's what I believe. Because uh, when I do energy auditing, I'm applying the first law of thermodynamics. I'm doing energy balance on the boiler, energy balance on the turbine, energy balance on the whole plant. The energy balance is the first law of thermodynamics. And that's what I teach in class. First law of thermodynamics. So I practice what I teach. And then I teach what I practice. And I think that makes a lot more sense to the students because you, you're going beyond the classroom environment. Okay, and research. Um, yes, you need to do research. You need to do research. I have a rig in the lab uh, which I use it uh, to test a technique for combustion. When I teach power plant technology, and there is a chapter on environmental uh, protect, uh, environmental um, issues. And we talk about emissions from power plants to the environment. And I can actually tell them, look, I have a rig in the lab and some postgraduate students are using it. We are developing a technique to reduce noxious emissions to the environment. And I can describe to them in detail the technique that I'm using. And I've presented that paper uh, in a few places, in Bali, in New Zealand. And from there, I come back and I share with them, these are the current technologies being used to clean up the environment. And do you know, you can see the students' eyes light up because they see something current in their classroom. So you need to do research. Okay, and of course, you have to be able to interconnect these areas. It will definitely contribute to your teaching styles and enhance your students' learning process. So basically, those are the ingredients. Those are the ingredients. And see how I use them together with the OBE approach. And I'm sure for those of you who have been to some teaching workshops, you have seen this before. Active learning collaborative learning, cooperative learning, uh, project-based learning, PBL. But sometimes I do get frustrated when I go to this uh, teaching workshop and they tell you this is active learning, but nobody actually show you how you go about doing it. Yeah? How do you go about doing it? So um, talking about OB, just on the fly here, uh, this is basically what uh, OBE how I interpret OBE at my panel level. Okay, so uh, you have the planning, the implementation, the assessment, and at various levels, the department will develop the program learning objectives. The panel then maps this uh, program learning objectives to the course learning objectives. Yeah, and then this is where you are. You are here, right? And I add one more to this course learning objective. I have a topic learning objectives. That means every topic has its outcome. They should be able to do something at the end of that topic in addition to the course learning outcome. This is something that I've done extra. And this is where you implement your uh, OBE uh, approach or teaching methods. Yeah? And of course, at the end, yeah, they want to see how you assess uh, the assessment part. Um, and if I believe right now when the EAC comes to you, they not only want to see evidence of implementation, now they are also interested in the improvement. I think they call it continuous quality improvement. So it's not just about implementing, but how do you improve it yourself in that respect? So. What kind of teaching models do I use? Well, I customize. I customize my teaching methods according to what I have in front of me, according to my students, my audience. How old are they? Are they uh, the space students? Or are they the first year students? Are they graduating uh, students? So I customize according to their age, their experience, the program. Are they electrical engineers? Are they chemical engineers? Are they mechanical engineers? 
and according to the subject, is this a first year course? Is it a core subject or is it just 